On this episode of Strength Coach Tutorials, we're going to finally finish off our athlete dashboard project by adding in our percent change metric and our trend graphs. Both of these are going to automatically change size depending on which two dates we choose to look between and they're going to be a really powerful way for us to visualize the key metrics that we are keeping on our athletes. So let's get after it. Okay, we're back in this, the final episode of our Google Sheets dashboard project. And just a quick reminder of how far we've come. We have created um, an athlete card up here, which displays all of the relevant information, which automatically changes um, based on the athlete that you select. And then automatically updating headings above all of our graphs, which again reflect the athlete and the dates that you've selected. We have three KPI charts down here on the right side, which you can turn on and off the team or positional averages with different checkboxes. Then in the last couple videos, we've added this athlete radar profile, which will automatically grow or shrink based on the metrics that we um, select from our radar profile creator. And then finally, in our last video, we created this the beginnings of our trend report, which based on the dates that we select, the trend report will automatically pull out the the score for that date in the metric that we've chosen. So to finish this project off, we're gonna do a couple things today, including the percent change and then the trend report um, little graph that we can see the trends of the different metrics that we're looking at. And what I'm gonna type is equals, um, I'm gonna use some brackets here. So we'll go most recent score H21 um, minus G21 and then over top of H21 and then I'm going to multiply that by 100. And it's gonna give me a value of minus 15 and that's just cause my number format is a little bit um, different. So what it's, what it's giving us is a value of minus 15.2 and that means that we have gotten 15.2% faster in this case. If I were to choose another metric, something like maybe um, a bench press, We've gone from 330 to 300, so we've had a decrease of 10% there, okay? Um, let's choose a different athlete, and you can see that this will um, automatically update based on that athlete as well. Okay, so from there now, if you remember from the video, what we had was a little arrow that shows when it is a positive change and a downward arrow that shows when it's a negative change. So what we're gonna to need to do is get those characters. So what I have here, a Google Doc, and what, what we're gonna do is use the insert, and I'm just going to use the special characters, and then here I can search, and I'm gonna type in down arrow, and it's going to give me some choices here. Um, let's use triangle. Yeah, I'm gonna use this one. So anything that is in black will automatically change colors with the font that we make it. So for example, if I made this red, the font color is going to change. And that's important for what we're gonna to try to do with this. And then the next one we're gonna choose is up triangle. So I want these two triangles and I'm gonna bring those over into my actual um, dashboard. And I'm just gonna paste those right there for now because we're gonna use those. And now what I'm gonna do is apply a custom number format to this um, cell so that it shows the arrows. So let's copy those one more time. I'm gonna select this cell, go up to format, number, and then go down to custom number format. And I'm just gonna paste those two arrows right in there. Now, what we have the ability to do now is actually change how many decimals we want this to be shown as. And we're going to type 0, 0.00 and then use a semicolon and anything we type after the semicolon is going to be what's demonstrated for our negative values. Okay, so in this case, we'll type 0, 0.00 again, and we want the upward arrow in front of our um, positive values and the downward arrow in front of our negative. So what we can see is when it is um, a positive number, we're gonna get upward arrow and then the number, and when it is a negative arrow, we're gonna get downward arrow and then the number. So let's hit apply and see what that looks like now. So as you can see, this was a negative value, but now it's showing a downward arrow of 17.85%, okay? And if we were to find um, a value that was positive, let's hopefully we can find one here. 
Yep, yeah, so 150 to 343, that is an increase, okay? Now the last thing I wanna do is color code this based on whether it is positive or negative. So let's go back to our format, number, custom number format, and what I'm gonna use is a square bracket and I'm gonna type in green. And then square bracket, close that off, and now what you'll see is when it's a positive value, it's gonna make that green, and I'm gonna use red, for my negative value in square brackets, and when it's a negative value, it's gonna make that red. So this looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, maybe 14, and it's going to sit right in our cell here, and when we have positive values, it's going to show that, and when we have negative values, it's going to show um, red. Okay, then the next thing that I wanna do is when we have a value that is a 10 meter sprint, so in this case, this, this value went from 228 to 216, it's showing that it actually decreased by 5.56%, but something like a sprint is actually something that we want to show as an increase. So an easy way to do that would just be to multiply this by negative one. And if you remember from our actual um, test setup, we have a spot on our sheet where we select whether a minimum value is better for all of the tests that we've selected. So we're gonna use this to our advantage. And what we're gonna do is use an if statement to look whether a minimum value is better for this particular test. And if it is, then we're gonna return a negative one. And if it's not, we'll just return a normal one so that this calculation works as normal. So what this is gonna look like is when we're gonna we're gonna to go to this formula and we're gonna type if, open this up, and we're gonna look some things up. So we're gonna type in VLOOKUP, open that up. We wanna look up the test and then comma, where do we want to look it up? I want to look it up in test setup. And we're going to go from A to B. And then the second column. And then it's not going to be sorted. So we'll use false. So if that equals true, then we want to return negative 1. If not, we will return 1. And I'll just close this off. And we're going to multiply that by the percent change formula. And I'll hit enter. And now what you can see is it's actually going to give us um, a negative one, which multiplied by another negative gives us a positive value. So how this works, we'll go over it one more time. So we're gonna go if VLOOKUP, the value that we've selected, so in this case 10 meter sprint, and we're looking for it in the test setup A to B, we go over one column, so we found it, then we go over one column to look whether it is uh, minimum better, and we know when we've selected the checkbox, that equals true, and if it does, then return negative one, otherwise return one. And in this case, it's giving us a positive value because our sprint has gotten better. Now, the last thing we're going to want to do here is I'm just going to wrap this whole formula in an if error that shows no test if there's any sort of error. So at the beginning of this formula, we'll type if error, open this up, go right to the end of the whole formula, type comma, quotation, no test. And then I'll exit this out. And all that's gonna do is if there's any sort of error, for example, if I was to delete this, it's just going to show no test. So that's part one, and that's how we do all of our trend or our percent change. And now the next thing that we have to do is our trend graph. And this is a pretty long formula, so I'll make this just a little bit bigger so you can stick with me here. For this, we're gonna use a function called sparklines. And what sparklines are is they're a way to add a chart inside of the actual cell. So all I've done here is taken four cells and just merged them. And inside of here, what I'm gonna type is equals sparkline, open that up. And what we wanna do is use a filter function in here to get our range. So I'm gonna type filter, open that up. And we're gonna use that index match formula that we've been using kind of all the way through. So I'm gonna type index. And what I wanna index is my data. And then comma, comma, match. We wanna match for um, F21, which is our actual test, comma, we want to look for it in headers, and then we'll close that off, and then close off the index, and then comma, when do we want to look for it? We want to look for it when the athlete name matches, and when the date is greater than or equal, and less than or equal to the dates we've selected. Let's do that part right now, and we'll put the other one underneath, just so that, so that it um, stays organized, so we can type index, open that up and we want to look at our data, comma, comma, match, uh, quotation, athlete name, quotation, look in headers, and comma, close that off, and we want it to be equal to, in this case, B3, which is where we stored our athlete name. I'm gonna lock that in, 
Another comma will go to our next condition, which is index data, comma, comma, match. In this case, we want to look for date, quotation, comma. We want to look for it in headers, comma, bracket, bracket. And in this case, we want the date to be um, greater than, that we're looking up greater than or equal to the date that we've chosen, which is going to be stored in G22. Okay, and we're going to leave that um, without any dollar signs because we want that reference to be dynamic. And then we'll do the last one here, comma, I'm going to go down one, index, data, comma, comma, match, quotation, date, quotation, comma, headers, comma, bracket, bracket. And in this case, we want it to be less than or equal to the final date that we've chosen. And I'm going to just leave a little space there. And I should be able to close this off now. And when I hit enter, what you'll see is the actual trend line. Okay, so let's go through this formula one more time. So we're doing a spark line of the whole range. Okay, so everything inside of this formula is going to be the range. Then we're filtering out all of the data that matches the test that we've selected based on some conditions. The first condition is whether the athlete name matches the athlete name we've chosen. The second condition is whether the date matches the first date of values, okay? And whether it is greater than or equal to. So it'll be this date and then every date um, greater than it. Then the second condition is whether then it, it is less than or equal to the last date. So it'll be this date and every date before that. Okay, so it's taking all of the values in between these two dates. And when I hit enter, you see our tread line. And if I was to shrink the date range, what you'll see is the actual trend line change. Okay, so you'll see all of the data points basically within that trend. Now the last piece for this formula is again, we're gonna wrap the whole thing in an if error and give it um, no values if there is no test. So if I'm gonna type if error, open that up, and then at the very end, I'm gonna type comma, quotation, no values and then quotation, close that all off, and it's not gonna change what this looks like, but if for whatever reason, say there was no date here, you can see that it's just gonna give me no values, and I'll just center this, put it in the middle, whoops, I'll put it in the middle, and then I'll make it a little bit bigger, maybe about 18, so that it just shows up when there's any problem with that, and I'll just put the date formula back in there, okay? So that's how that all works, and because all of these links are or because we, the way we've done these links, some of the things aren't locked in, we should be able to just copy this down a bunch of times and it should automatically work, which it does. And just like that, we've completed the athlete dashboard project. Now, one final thing you might wanna to add to this project is the ability to hide this filters menu. So what I'm gonna do is just go from column D all the way to A, I'll shrink this up a little bit, and I'm going to go to view and I'm gonna type group and say group columns A to D, and this adds this little bar here where now I can close that off and we only see our dashboard. So this is great if you're sending it to a coach or something, we can just open that back up. Now the last piece is maybe you want to be able to print this and do a one page report. So what I can do here now is I can, when I close this down, I can go to my print and then change some things here. So maybe we wanna do current sheet and then landscape, and we wanna to fit to page. And for our margins, if we go to custom margins, what we can do is I can make these about 0.15 all the way around. And what you'll see, the way that we've set this dashboard up is that it actually will fill out a page quite nicely. And we could print this, or I could PDF this and send this to a coach, and I think it looks pretty good, okay? So that's the last piece of the puzzle. So I hope this project's helped you out and taught you a lot of valuable skills about how to make this Google Sheets Athlete Dashboard. I know that it was a fun project for me to put together. If you have any questions or comments about the dashboard, just leave them in the comments section below. Or if you have any ideas for future projects, you can leave those in the comment section below. So with that, I will see you in the next video. And thank you for watching and getting to the end of this project.